Hi, this is Frank from Gunsim.com and today's subject is Bullet Drop. Subject, dear to all our hearts. So the first news flash is that a heavy bullet falls at the same rate as a light bullet. Aristotle used to believe that heavy bullets would fall faster than light bullets, but he was wrong. It's very easy to demonstrate. So in half a second a bullet falls about 30 inches. It might have travelled 400 yards in that time, but in half a second it only falls about 30 inches. So bullets don't fall very fast, 30 inches in half a second. Well let's say that's about 5 feet per second. So drag depends on velocity squared. There's the complicated looking formula with v squared in it. Okay, so the forward drag, let's say we're 2500 feet per second. Square that, that's 65 million. The downward drag, remember, is 5 feet per second. Square that, you get 25. So forwards drag is about a quarter of a million times greater than downwards drag. So there is some downwards drag and in that streamlined things will fall very slightly faster, but it's a bit like spilling your drink on the Titanic. It doesn't make a lot of difference. So we can forget about downwards air resistance because the forwards air resistance is so high. So therefore we want streamlined bullets and we say that a streamlined bullet has a high BC number. High BC means streamlined. And the advantage of that is that the more streamlined bullets don't slow down so much as they travel through the air. So the pointy looking bullet might travel 500 yards in the time it takes the blunt bullet to travel 300 yards. And they both drop the same amount. So blunt bullets take longer to get there. So they spent more time dropping, assuming they start at the same speed. Now, if they start at different speeds, then the higher the muzzle velocity, the better. Uh, for drop, that is. So high muzzle velocity is less drop. Low muzzle velocity is more drop. Obviously enough. A side effect of that is wind drift, because wind drift is caused by the bullet slowing down, or bullet lag. So blunt bullets have more drop, but they also have more wind drift, which is more difficult to deal with. An interesting fact, if you scale a bullet up to double the diameter, you double the BC. So here we've got two bullets, one small and one big, but they're exactly the same shape. The bigger one has a bigger BC. Because you double the size, then you double the BC, assuming everything else is the same. So big bullets tend to be more streamlined. That's why if you hear about some new sniper record, it's not done with 223. It tends to be done with 338 or 50 cal, something big, because bigger bullets have bigger BC, and then they have less drop, and more importantly, they have less wind drift. Of course, heavier bullets go more slowly, usually, so there's a bit of a trade-off. But generally speaking, heavy is good for long-distance work. Now, at high altitudes, or in high temperatures, the air is thinner, so there's less drag. That makes sense. Thin air, less to push against. Now, BC is measured according to different systems. The usual one is G1. Almost all manufacturers use G1. So that's really all you need to, to know. And if you say shooting out 300 yards, the G1 system is accurate enough. In this case, you're going between about 28,000 feet per second and 18,000 feet per second across 300 yards, and G1 system will work well for that kind of velocity range. But if you're a long-distance shooter, your velocity might drop to half by the time the bullet gets there. So the G1 system isn't accurate enough for that by itself. So what you have to do is have more than one G1 value. So as the velocity drops, you start switching in different G1 values as a sort of a workaround. It's not particularly clever, but it does work. And of course, the computer does it for you. You just type in the BC numbers. Manufacturers like Sierra give you different BC values for different velocity ranges. And the computer's smart. It can use that. And you need that, something like that for long range shooting, if you're using 
the G1 system. There is another system that's called the G7 system, which works for all velocities, but it only works for one shape of bullet, and that's a pointy boat tail, like the one in the picture. Luckily, long-range shooters tend to use pointy boat tails. So if you're doing long-range shooting, you can uh, get yourself some Berger bullets and use the G7 system, and then you've only got one BC number to deal with up to any distance. Okay, that concludes my briefing. Thanks for listening.